Duda! So, very quickly, PC DML gamers, the new update has now been released for you. So, yesterday, most people got the new update, which includes the new ancient dragons added into the game. We've got stuff like friendly gestures, dragon trays, a lot more fun with your friends! There we go, we got a shooting star dragon, wasn't that nice? So now, you will have the ability to go and look at ancient dragons in your dragon codex. I can confirm that Yamamad is going to be a permanently purchasable dragon in the shop, like Ares was. But you can look through this in your own game, you can also go ahead and you can buy yourselves ancient habitats now. Aren't they just fantastic? They're a really cool looking habitat. You might as well go and get them if you want to. But, there is something very, very important to note, because a lot of you have been waiting for this information for the last few days. You see one of these dragons here? This guy right here is Urya, which is the main reward dragon for the whole of the new fiery ancient event that is going to be coming out. That's not him, that's Yamad. This boy here, Urya, and you guys have been asking for what his base stats are. Well, we finally got a post from Adam on the Gameloft forums that has revealed this information to us, and it seems the numbers that I've been playing around with on the special build are slightly different from the numbers that are going to be going live. So, it was in the Ancient Dragons Are Here forum thread, and Oya's base attack is here. So, at the beginning, he starts off with 79 base attack, that gets upgraded to 84, and then with all three of his elements unlocked, Arya has a base attack of 90. 90 is the highest base damage stat in the entire game, because if we check Freya, for example, she had the same stats as some of the other special major reward dragons, and she had 288 health, base attack of 89. So, Arya here has 290 base HP and 90 base attack, which compared to Freya is 2 points of health higher and 1 point of attack higher. So, Arya is indeed, technically speaking, the strongest dragon in the game. And let's not forget that Arya here also resists a couple of elements, and he also has Divine as part of his element pairings with Ancient. So if you wanted a buffing dragon with super high damage, he is going to be your best bet. But although you could just use his fire element and absolutely wreck everything in sight, that's also another option. But Arya is indeed the strongest dragon ever released in DML. Doesn't have Wind, doesn't have Shadow, doesn't have Plant, but he will decimate teams. So along with that, we do have Pokra, who is um, nothing to snuff your nose at with a base attack of 89 and a base HP of 289, which are just one point difference from Arya. So Pokra is not bad by any stretch. Then we have Yamad with a base attack of 74 and a base HP of 274. Um, if you'll notice something, it looks really underwhelming compared to the last two because he is not a major exception dragon. Um, that's the problem, really. If those stats for Yamad are true, he's just completely outclassed by the other dragons, which is really unfortunate considering he's the best looking one. But anyway, n next we have the Ikez Dragon with 86 base attack, 286 ba base HP, and Merlin with 89 base attack and 289 base HP, which is the same as Pokra. So you'll notice a trend, 89 attack, eight, 289 HP, 89 attack, 289 HP. Seems like they definitely intend for Molim to be a payment only winnable dragon, which is um, probably not something that we want to be hearing, considering that we have to play two sets of events to get the other dragon, Ikez, and then get Oyar on top of all that. It's pretty crazy. But. They also said, for what it's worth, all ancient dragons have their stats set manually. I imagine that this will be the case for future events. 
to so unless otherwise stated please presume this to be the case so you know everything that we used to know about working out a drug and its damage or its hp based off of the elements that it has with these ancients scrap all of it you know we had all of the exception divines that came out like we had um you know like i said before we've got the freyors we've got the hathors and all of those dragons but now the ancients will be manually set in what their base attack and hp is gonna be now this is good in a sense because it means that all of the ancients are j aren't just going to be incredibly overpowered beyond belief which is great i like that but it does also mean that at any point if they chose to Gameloft could just make one dragon the most powerful dragon in the game by far and there's nothing that we can do about it because they plan on setting each of them manually. So now it's become a lot more like say Pokemon where it's like it's depending on the actual dragon and um, they change the stats for every single one that comes out which can be really cool depending on how it is used but Again, it still scares me, because even though it's confirmed that right now these dragons aren't so incredibly game-breaking that we should all give up tomorrow. But it sets a really bad precedent for all of the existing dragons who don't have specially inflated stats that are still in the game. Because what are we going to do with those? Those poor little commons and rares and... The non-exception legendaries and divines, what are we going to do with those? They're just going to suck now. And I think that is the, the main issue that a lot of people have. It's the fact that power creep is just, is just going to keep going and going and going. As soon as you start down that slippery slope, it never stops. So Arya, right now, might be the strongest dragon in the game. But... What's stopping it from the next ancient event, us getting another dragon with a single point higher in attack and a single point higher in defense again? I keep saying defense, I mean HP. But there's nothing stopping that from happening. So is it worth investing into these new dragons or should you just wait for one that maybe you prefer the elements of? Like maybe you want to have a, an ancient divine shadow or an ancient divine plant instead? It's like, we know that there are plans for more of these kinds of events in the future. So, would it be better to just wait? And I think that's the main problem. Before, with all of these new dragons, everyone used to get so excited and try and win every single one of them. Because we knew what they were going to be, because of how the base stats worked. And it was like, okay, we can sort of work out which one's going to be good. But then we got to the point where it was like, okay, Plant of Shadow is too good, Divine is just better legendary anyway, yada yada. It's like way back when, when we didn't have Divine, everyone was like, okay, you need to have legendary, you have to have Shadow, you should probably have Light, and you should probably have Plant, and that was pretty much the used, used meta always. But now, it has just become... Every dragon that isn't an Oya is bad. So I don't even know what I prefer, to be honest. Genuinely, I don't know. Is it better to have one dragon every few months that's just so insanely OP that you'll never beat it? Or is it better to know what the meta is and just pick around it, but have that readily available to you? Probably the old one, in my opinion. Obviously, I'm not the only one that matters. And my opinion is not going to change the development decisions of the game. But if Molim is also intended as a purely... I, these effects are weird. But if Molim is intended as a purely pay-to-win only dragon, or 99% of the time only pay-to-win dragon, then it's going to be another one of those things where it just feels really sucky to try and get the main reward. Because before the, the main RNG came out of the chests, right? The divine chests where you had to open them up. Maybe you'd get insanely lucky and get the 300 drop on the divine. Which meant that then as long as you did the castle event, you'd get the other dragon. But this time it's not like that. 
because you have to get the dragon out of the divine chest and you have to get the dragon out of the RNG dice event and then you gotta get the other one out of the other event I don't know again whatever I think and whatever I would prefer for the game is not the same as what Gameloft would necessarily like or want for the game and it's like I've said before, I don't think the dice event is inherently bad. I like that they've gone with something just really different and in a way familiar because, you know, most people have played board games, maybe with their family or maybe they're just into that sort of tile-based thing. Sort of like roll a dice, make a move sort of thing. But you know me. I don't like everything being made only pay to win. And I wish that there was a dragon that was really simple, but not necessarily easy for all players to get a hold of. As long as it was doable for someone that, you know, still enjoys DML, but maybe they can't invest a lot of time into the game, then I still feel like they should be able to get at least one divine out of the events. Maybe I'm in the minority in thinking that. But that's my thoughts anyway. Just uh, the, the thoughts of a wee lass, one might say. But anyway, just to remind you with the new update, Bottomless Dungeon has been tweaked. So it should be slightly nicer. You can soar over 10,000 to 10,500 now, which is a very pointless change really. But it is a change nonetheless. And um, before we leave today, I am going to go ahead and pop down an ancient habitat just to be hopeful that we will one day find any use out of it whatsoever. There we go. Look at that wonderful habitat. I do like the design of it quite a lot. The little moving gemstone and everything. It's a pretty little island. Uh, is it better than divine? I don't know. What's, what's better? Ancient or divine? The, the divine one is very bright. It gives me a little bit of eye tear or like screen flare, if that makes sense. Whereas this one, it's just like, it looks runic. And I like the fact that the different sides are actually very different because you've got the big dragon poking up and then on the other side, he's stuck in the floor. I like that it is not completely symmetrical. I don't know if this one is either, but I like the other one for that. But anyway, I think for now... That is probably going to do us, but do remember that Mr. Yamadi is going to be permanently available to purchase in the shop. And um, I don't know if it actually shows us that yet, but when the event comes out, he will be purchasable. Um, he's not cheap, though. He's not cheap. So you'd have to have a lot of gems if you wanted to buy him outright. And again, his base stats don't seem to be that fantastic comparatively so maybe you'd be better off saving some of your gems and going for pokra depends on if you're into the rng fandangle sort of thing oh yeah i forgot we had a clan event as well whoops anyway for now i appreciate you being here um i hope that you are not too disappointed in Aya, but now you know his base stats you can work out your decisions from there. So, you know, for now, thank you very much for joining me.